Barcelona six points clear at the top of La Liga table. Real Madrid, of course, have the chance to close that deficit. They take on Real Sociedad on Sunday. Craig, I thought this game was really similar to what we saw in the Getafe game. Yep. In that they didn't really do much, but they just about got it done. But there's a lot of areas of the pitch you'd be questioning why they're looking so vulnerable at the moment. Not a lot of pace to the play again and, and not a lot of Christmas to the passing, which, which completely goes against what we saw in the cup final in Saudi Arabia. Yep. Now, he has rotated a little bit since that cup final and De Jong was out and then he was back in, had a rest. And once again, you have to say, Ansu Fati got taken off and we're not seeing... We're not seeing that exciting Ansu Fati who does things on the field, you go, wow, I mean, he could... He's just a game changer. He's just not—it's not happening for him at the moment. Maybe with the the injury problem to Dembele, he'll get some game time in the wider position when Ansu, when uh, Lewandowski comes back in from his suspension. But yeah, I, I suppose a bit like Real Madrid, they're just somehow finding a way to get those three points, which is fine. Yes. Which is fine, but. I mean, Girona, although they were completely outplayed and the stats will tell you all that, you saw in the highlights a couple of those chances there and, and maybe the potential for a penalty call. When it is so tight at 1-0 and you're not finishing these teams off that play with that sort of low block, then it only takes that bit of 10 seconds where the defenders don't pick up and the striker makes a mess of it. Another time it goes in or the referee gives a decision against Barca, which he didn't today, you're dropping points and then all of a sudden Real Madrid are completely back in this race. It, it, if you're the host, it's just so frustrated because, as I mentioned, it was a real gift of a goal, Shaq. Yeah, it, it really was. And, and that has to be... You can't, you can't do that against, Bar uh, against Barcelona, even this version of Barcelona. And it, it, it gives you an, an uphill climb. And it starts down in the corner. And this is just so cheap. I mean, not wanting to concede a throw or corner and, and you give the ball away to Barca in, in these parts of the field and then compound that with... This just isn't goalkeeper good goalkeeping and that's about as nicely as, as I can put it. When you come up against Barcelona, um, you know it's always going to be a tall order. When Barcelona in this kind of form, there, there's, there's an opportunity for you. To throw that opportunity away, away to shoot yourself in the foot, I, I think is, is doubly damning for, for Girona. And the penalty? Seem, I, I'm surprised because we, we know that Spain go on the softer side when, when it comes to awarding penalties. When you see those two holding incidents in the book, in, in the box on the replay, I was surprised Listen, that they didn't send the ref to VAR. We, we, we know very well, Daniel, that had this been against Barcelona or Real Madrid, or even Atletico Madrid, you know, Jordi Alba's got a hold of a shirt I, there as yeah, well. Yeah, Alba started it. Alba's got a hold of a shirt. Eric Garcia, Garcia follows on. Is, is grappling. And quite frankly, it probably should have gone against him. Now, had it been on a Barca player in a big game and the drop points or Real Madrid, they would, it would have been all over the papers. Yeah. So that's my point, is when you're leaving games as tight as they are, it could come down to something like this going against you, which hasn't on this occasion. But the weird thing is, I'll go back to the cup final in Saudi Arabia. Xavi had a big smile on his face. He loved what he saw. We talked about the youngsters in particular yeah. and Lewandowski, who was available for that game. Played a Ruhu right back, tactically just got everything spot on. And the word was that Xavi finally, he, this is not him saying, but he kind of finally thinks that he's moulding this team into the shape that he wants it. And maybe that's the case, but we just haven't really seen the evidence of that since they came back. In fact, I think the performances since, since they returned from Saudi Arabia have actually been quite worrying. Yes. Not, not mm. the points total, but the performances. Uh, Ali Moreno was supposed to be with us for the whole of this discussion. He joins us now as we just fixed uh, uh, your technical problems. Ali, I imagine you agree with everything the boys have said. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what the boys have said, but <laughs> sure I agree with them. <laughs> they said Barca were brilliant. Best they've seen. Uh, uh, how they set the bar so high after that win in Saudi Arabia, but they just haven't kicked on from it. Yeah, and, and the surprising thing is that that was supposed to be sort of the uh, jumping point. That was supposed to be the moment in which, okay, now they've turned the corner because now they know that they can beat Real Madrid in a big game. And so, therefore, you would think, logically speaking, at least on paper, that this was then the moment to where you were going to see the very best from Barcelona. I will say this about Barcelona, uh, if you want to be sort of glass half full, is that defensively they're keeping zeros. But if you actually watch the games, 
It's not that they're keeping serious because defensively they've been so good. It's that they managed to make the big save with Ter Stegen or the big tackle here and there. But they're hanging on at the end of matches. They were hanging on against Getafe. They were hanging on against Real Sociedad when Real Sociedad were playing a men down in Copa del Rey quarterfinal in the midweek. And they were hanging on today against Girona, a team that for long periods of time during the match didn't really present much of a threat. But once they decided to commit some numbers forward, now Barcelona were hanging on once again. So you may want to focus on the one nothing and say, well, look how good they have been defensively and how disciplined they have been. I look at it from the perspective that eventually, and I think this is something that Craig may have been talking about, eventually this is going to catch up to you. you. You haven't been able to put teams away, and this is a concern that Xavi has communicated time and time again. They don't put teams away. They allow teams to hang around. Eventually this is going to catch up. <clears throat> they have to improve. But having said all that, they're winning games. Mm. And in winning games, it's easier to resolve issues when everybody's feeling good about the current situation of the club. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.